<laughs> what prompted one to open a winery? Great question. Actually, a lot of decisions that have been made in this joint have been made over a glass of wine, perhaps. Well, there's a lot of reasons for opening wineries, some of which may surprise some people. We were prompted to open a winery uh, as a retirement project, which was a, sort of a crazy idea. We sort of knew what we were getting into when we started here. Our plans all along were this was an ideal place to, to have a winery. So, so we kind of balanced it out among the family. Do we want to do this? And we decided, let's take the big jump, and we did, and we're still here today. We either had to make the decision to get out or get deeper, and we chose deeper. We chose to start a winery. <laughs> For the first probably half a dozen years, there wasn't more than seven or eight wineries around the lake, each one of them kind of acting independently. We were the fifth winery to open on this side of Seneca Lake, and of course, that's all changed now. <laughs> you know, obviously, I can't compare uh, 2010 to 1977, but I can tell you uh, that's a significant difference by having uh, the, the wineries working and marketing together. Gosh, we really depend on each other. Uh, we help each other a great deal. You know, the, the success of one winery on the Seneca Lake Wine Trail is the success of all the wineries on the Seneca Lake Wine Trail. And uh, I think that is the beauty of it. The reason that we started the winery uh, was we were looking for alternative markets for our grapes. Uh, the grape market had changed with the uh, changes in the ownership of some of the larger wineries that we were selling our grapes to. Uh, the consequence being we were looking for another market uh, and felt that perhaps a small winery might be a good opportunity to do that. Well, things have changed significantly since 1977. First and foremost, uh, the fact that uh, when we started, uh, we were the only winery on the lake. Today, there are, there are close to probably 60. Uh, there were really no winery organizations in, in those days, uh, at least not as we know them today. Things like our wine trail, things like the New York Wine and Grape Foundation. So we were all pretty much operating a little bit independently and perhaps a little bit in the dark. The grape industry at that point was uh, finding it difficult to find uh, lucrative markets for their grapes. And uh, we knew that if we didn't do something different, we couldn't continue to grow grapes. The grape market started to be very unfavorable for small to medium-sized growers. Um, looking toward that, uh, the opportunity to start a winery, uh, they planted some varieties in the early 80s that might work well for a farm winery. Things were pretty tight. I already had a job in Penn Yan to kind of help support the winery, and that's when we came to the realization that this wasn't enough. It was either close down the farm or start a winery. So crazy as we are, we invested more money and started the winery. Well, it was a very small industry back then. Uh, not only just our business being small, but the, the group of us that were in it was quite small. and. Uh, we struggled uh, to lure people to the area. Uh, yeah, the early days were a lot different than they are now for sure. Main reason we started the winery back in 1984 was uh, due to the surplus of grapes that we'd had. Uh, the bigger wineries had stopped um, buying a lot of our grapes and with that surplus we decided we needed to basically start our own winery and uh, producing wine and hopefully selling it to the tourists. Oh, the early days, that's going back a ways. Um, the reason I opened the winery was I was actually growing grapes for other wineries when I first started and we had all the varieties that I would want to make wine out of, which are European varietals, uh, planted already and, and just watching those grapes go to other wineries and be blended into to a mixture of grapes from various places, um, I sort of got the feeling that I wanted to show off what my vineyards could do and so and the natural progression for me was really to go into a winery of my own. Um, so we started the, the first commercial vintage in 1990 and uh, moved forward from there. Well, the early days in the Finger Lakes, uh, actually when I bought Fox Run uh, in 1993, there were only 14 wineries on Seneca Lake. And things have changed a lot since, since then. We've gone from 14 wineries to there now over uh, probably 50, 55 wineries on Seneca Lake. And, uh, you know, the tourists uh, coming to visit uh, a large Part of that has been done by the marketing of the Seneca Lake Wine Trail. We were prompted to open a winery because we had a vineyard already, an operational vineyard, and we were selling our wines to other wineries. 
And then we noticed how our, our grapes uh, were winning a lot of gold medals at the different wineries. And so we asked them if they would uh, put our name on the back label just to give us a little credit for growing the grapes. And they actually, most of the wineries were, well, if we do that, then you'll start your own winery. We were looking for a way to use our own grapes, make our own wines, and use our venue here, which is our estate. And so then a few years later, my dad and I decided to uh, start our own winery anyway. Well, we thought the early days were pretty good, but they're not as good as now. Uh, big reason is because of the wineries. The wineries are really driving the economy now, the visitor economy. Just phenomenal. It's lengthened the season. And it brings a lot of regional business in, so for us, we've picked up a lot of loyal customers that come back year after year that we would have gotten, we wouldn't have gotten if the wineries weren't here. Things have changed dramatically. We went from having, you know, no tourists on the property to 8,000 the first year, and we're over 23,000 now. Oh, things have changed tremendously. We used to close some days of the week, but uh, now we're closed four days out of the whole year. The first weekend we had moved back to the area and the winery was opened and I came down to help out on Labor Day weekend and there were probably four of us working and, you know, we were pretty busy, we thought. And now, if we only had four people here on Labor Day weekend, we'd be stampeded. So we've seen a, a huge increase in traffic and our, certainly our wine production has grown dramatically. A big day or a big Saturday at the winery would be maybe 15 or 20 people coming through. Uh, now a big Saturday at the winery can be up to 2,500 people. Things have changed enormously since then. Uh, first of all, the winery here at Lammer Landing itself has expanded tremendously. Um, we've added two wings to the original winery building and to the original cellar. Um, but just the, the traffic flow that's coming through, the tourists that are coming through the area has increased tremendously. There are a whole lot of new businesses that have sprouted up just to cater to the people that are coming to visit the wineries. So it's, it's, a, it's a whole different ballgame. That first year that uh, I, uh, 1993, when I owned Fox Run, we had uh, 7,500 uh, visitors. Uh, we had 80,000 last year just taste wine. Um, you know, so it's quite a lot more than that. Um, so it's gotten a lot, a lot busier, a lot more exciting. A lot more things to do now in Seneca Lake. We've seen a lot more visitors to the area um, due to the due to the wine trail. We sure see a lot of limos and buses and individuals that are uh, heading for those wineries. Most of the wineries in the area are family owned. I've, I have had an occasion to know some of them and it's it really seems to be a big family effort that goes into making their business work. You see all kinds of relatives, uh, generations uh, working in the in the wineries. Yeah, a lot of the wineries in the around the Seneca Lake Wine Trail are family owned. Um, they started kind of the way we did, you know, originally growing grapes in the region. Well, especially the older wineries, a lot of them began as family farms. Uh, people that were growing grapes and uh, and decided to integrate uh, into the wine business itself, and so. These small family farms pooled their money much like we did and we uh, started a small winery that uh, has slowly grown into a larger concern. Yeah, most of the wineries have started from people who own vineyards, pretty much like I did. And we're mostly small family owned businesses and it was um, a way for us to uh, expand our customer base uh, and, and also a, a way to really show off how, how great the fruit is in the area and do something that was um, our own. I think most of us are entrepreneurs that really, really take a lot of pride in our work. Uh, it's a great opportunity for us because they are family owned wineries. Um, I think it makes it a little bit more special. You never know when the owners or the winemakers are going to pop into the wineries. Our owner comes in every day about 4.30, um, him and his wife, and they love to come in and meet the, the customers. And she sits down and has a drink and sometimes joins them as well. The, and the customers love that. And of course, all of the merchants, everybody in town knows all the winery owners. It's like one big happy family. And uh, it's, it's not stuffy. It's not like going to Nappy Valley. When you come to the, a winery in the Finger Lakes, you're family and they, they, they just come back every year, they love the wineries. Well, I, I think the, one of the reasons uh, that the wineries work together uh, with the wine trail is uh, the, the power and, and synergy of a lot of wineries 
having uh, similar goals and looking for opportunities to promote themselves. The wine trail, I can remember when we started that uh, back in the, I guess it was the, the mid 80s and it was probably a half a dozen to three quarters of a dozen of us and, one, and we just decided that by working together we could bring people into the area, do some wine trail events. Uh, the wine trail's been very, very helpful. I think that that's certainly helped publicize the Seneca Lake region uh, specifically. Um, and along with the New York Wine and Grape Foundation, which has been a, a, also a big part of getting people together, that, that, that everybody seems to work together. With all the wineries working together, we're able to um, have a lot more financial wherewithal to do marketing. So we can do advertising in Rochester and Syracuse and Buffalo and Pennsylvania, New Jersey, whereas as a single winery, we can't do that. Um, by working together, we all um, we can come up with a lot more ideas on how to uh, make our region known to other people, um, you know. And and by doing our wine trail events together, you know, we we can provide a fun and very exciting time for the wine consumer out there. The wineries have worked together and created a huge draw here. And I don't think that if we had only a few wineries and they weren't working together, this certainly wouldn't be a destination. But very few people are likely to come visit an area that only has maybe one or two wineries. But when we all get together as a trail, um, it gives people a reason to come up and you know visit many, many wineries in a weekend. Also, a lot of the trail events that we do, uh, deck the halls and things like that, you know, make it a lot of fun for the people to come up and you know hit all the different wineries and taste the different food and wine pairings that we have. So yeah, that's made a, a huge difference. I feel like the change in the um, popularity and um, and uh, the traffic that we get in the wineries is largely due to the, the cooperation the wineries have um, had over the years in the Seneca Lake Wine Trail. Everything from producing a very high quality brochure to um, events and just an ongoing marketing uh, campaign that, that brings people to our area. So I, I believe the collaborative efforts of the group of wineries around this lake has been really, really useful. The Wine Trail brochure has been just a huge boost. Uh, the, a lot of the, our customers see our name in the, in the Wine Trail brochure and that brings them down here and, and we're a little bit different. We're kind of a, uh, we're about a mile off the beaten path off of Route 14 and so but the Wine Trail brochure just kind of guides them right to our location and, and without and that's our primary uh, advertising for the year is the Wine Trail brochure. It's great exposure for us with the wine trail events and as well as being on the uh, in the brochure. Uh, when the wine trail began, uh, it, we slowly started seeing increased business due to uh, different special events and so on. And I think it gained a lot of momentum. It uh, fed some money into our marketing budgets and we used that, reinvested it, and it has grown immensely. So the wine trail itself, I think, is one of the biggest factors for Seneca Lake. Uh, having as many wineries, successful wineries now, as it has. I receive a lot more business because of the wine trail. Because of being in their brochure, reference calls, and from the other wineries sending people here. So we all support each other in one way or another. With, with uh, more wineries on the wine trail, it gives a kind of a, a bigger target for our, our audience to focus on. And so we get probably, probably a one to 200,000 more uh, tourists to our area than, than to some of the areas that only have one or two wineries. People come back to this area because of the uh, beauty of the region. Um, not only are there things to do, such as you know go to the wineries or go to special events, but while they're here, uh, the area is just so pretty. They can go to the gorge and hike the trails. They can um, go to Seneca Lake and take a cruise. Um, there's, there's just so many things to do um, here outdoors and um, a lot of people don't realize that New York State has this kind of beauty in it, but the wineries and the vineyards really help make it beautiful. We, we work with a lot of other businesses in the area, restaurants and hotels and bed, bed and breakfasts and other attractions to the area. Uh, just try to show people all of the things that there are available to do here, not to mention how beautiful it is. And the, the scenery is just fabulous. So, 
Well, I think there's no question that the wine trail has had a, a great deal of benefit to uh, the region and, and other businesses. Again, I know I keep referring back to 1977, but if we one were to go back to that area, or even, even to the early 90s, uh, there have been hotels built uh, on both ends of the lake uh, since the beginning of the wine trail, uh, a plethora of B&Bs, cheeseries, breweries, uh, uh, farmers markets, uh, etc. And, and a lot of this has to do with the fact that the wine trail uh, brings in well over 100,000 people and probably closer to 200,000 people on an annual basis. As we've seen the traffic to the different wineries increase, we've also seen the number of restaurants, the number of bed and breakfasts and motels and other um, businesses that benefit from the tourists increase and, and also prosper and grow. Um, and I think that, that that's been, I think, you know, the wine trail working together was the earliest part of that growth. And those other businesses um, have, have come along and it really makes the whole area much more attractive to people. It's not, we're not just a one trick pony. We aren't just a bunch of wineries. There are a lot of great things to do. And we have the wonderful natural assets of the, the lakes and our, our gorges and state parks and all sorts of other wonderful um, attributes here. Well, you draw people in, yes. You have a bigger pie and uh, everybody can take a slice. So the restaurants that have popped up because of the popularity of the wine trails. The limousine companies and the hotels as well as restaurants. Uh, being a part of the brochure is a, a huge deal, I think, not only for the wineries but also for the uh, tourism industry in general in the area. The tourism that we've created is, is huge and uh, as the people come up, they not only want to go to the wineries, they want to go to the local restaurants, uh, the breweries, you know, they stay at the hotel, um, you know, and do a lot of the other things that are available in town. So it, it's been a huge impact on the whole, uh, the whole area. When I started here in 1993, it was real interesting. The, uh, the bed and breakfasts would open on Memorial Day and close Labor Day. And sometimes they'd stay open a little further than that. And so the wine trail started doing these cooperative events in the off season, either in the spring or in the fall and winter. And, and um, the more, the, all these people would come down for these events, so now the B&Bs had to stay open because there was too much business. I, I've been able to see the development of all these new businesses and, and the existing businesses that were in this area. And as the wine trail and visitation has increased, the um, there's been more business to, to local, you know, bed and breakfast, restaurants, etc. Back in the day, say in the 70s, Watkins Glen was a two-month season, July and August. Then when Time Spell opened the track, that, that maybe, maybe made it a four-month season. Now with the wineries, it's about a ten-month season. And they even come in February for, for uh, uh, Valentine's, I know. So it's really helped our business a lot. It extends the season of tourism to the area as they add shoulder events in the fall and the spring, it, it really helps um, bring people to the area longer. Well, what would I say to someone who's never been to the area? Uh, I guess to begin with, I would have to say you really don't know, you know what you're missing. What are you waiting for? Uh, I think they'll, they'll feel the same way that so many people that come here the first time, they come over the hill and they see the lakes and the vineyards and, and all this stuff that the area has to offer and they go, why haven't I been here before? It's amazing. I can't believe this is all here. Come. It's, it's beautiful. Uh, there's lots to do. There's some fabulous restaurants. There's some fabulous wine. The scenery is unbeatable. I would say come. Come. This is where it's happening. You're going to find your favorite spot here. You're going to have a wonderful time. There's something for everyone. If I came to the Finger Lakes, before I was gone, I'd be trying to figure out when I would want to come back again because I know that I could only do a few of the things that I would realize are available here. It's such a beautiful area. There's so much to do. The wineries, uh, everyone is different. Everyone has their own characteristics. All the wines are different, but there's one for everybody's taste. There's waterfalls, there's water, there's hiking. There's everything that you could want right in this area. If you're into wine, you're into food, and you're into uh one of the most beautiful spots in the world, and you haven't been here, you better get here, because um, this is one of the best experiences, and once you come, you'll always come back. 
There's so many wineries and there's so many different wines and even the same wineries are doing different things all the time. It's a great experience um, in that sense, but museums and parks and there's so much to do that year round it's a, it's a great place to go. And again, I'd be, I'd be planning my second visit on my first one. We're really uh, well known for the uh, great quality wines that we make here. Uh, there's plenty of wineries to go visit, uh, lots of different styles, lots of different feels. And uh, it's a beautiful area, and uh, I'd say to someone who hasn't been here, it's time to come visit the Finger Lakes Wine Trail. I would tell anybody that's never been here to, to come on out and make it, make it a nice week-long vacation, if not longer, because there are so many different things to do here. It's, it's quaint, but quaint in a way where people can really enjoy it. Uh, it's a world-class wine-producing region, and for, for many people in this country, it's within three to 400 miles of their home. They don't have to travel halfway around the world to, to see not only the wines, but the scenery. You need to get here because you'll come back. You'll fall in love. It's spectacular. I've lived here all my life. I'm not going anywhere. If anybody has not been to the Finger Lakes area, I think you'll be amazed, you'll enjoy it, you'll feel relaxed, you'll feel rested, and you'll go home with a smile on your face. So what are you waiting for? Oh, definitely come to the area and enjoy our wines and our beautiful views in the, in the Finger Lakes and, and just being on the lake. And, and I think at our, our place, you just really want to take, uh, plan on a little more time where you can come down, just sit at the picnic tables or sit on the dock and, and just enjoy a glass of wine and, and kind of slow your, your world down.